Okay, so it's a different kind of podcast today, guys. Um, I'm just here with my very good friend and Goofy's breeder, Tasha, who is, um, has been a friend for many years, mm -hmm. but also somebody that I kind of want to talk to because I really respect you with your knowledge in, in Malinois. Um, and we were talking on Wednesday. Yes. We got on the subject of genetics. Yep. And I think the first thing I brought up to you was um, this lighter color, right? Which you call the sand? I did. Okay. Yep. And that's a, can you explain, it's a dilute, right? Some of them are and some of them aren't. Okay. So um, there's two different colors that are uh, in Malinois that are registrable, but they're not desirable. Okay. Um, sand, which is very, it's a washed out fawn. Got it. So it, it, some of them are dilutes and some of them are not. It just kind of depends on their genetic profile. Interesting. Um, there's also a, a gray, like a true gray. Okay. Um, you see, you tend to see those more in the turves than the mouths. Okay. Um, they are quite rare, but that is a true dilute. Is that similar to the silvers it that is. they're showing? Okay. Yep. So is a silver a registered color? And a it's called a gray. It's called a gray. It is. Okay. Yep. So then we go from there, and I want to kind of touch on a bunch of things. I want to touch on the genetics as far as they go for confirmation, looks and everything. Sure. And then I want to talk about genetics as far as behavior. Sure. Right? How that goes. Um, and the question I've got on that next one is black. Okay. Okay. Is that a standard color? Yes and no. Depends on who you ask. Okay. <laughs> well, I want to ask Honestly. you. Yeah. Okay. Um, blacks have been in the breed for since the beginning of time. Okay. Um, when the breed was recognized um, in Belgium, blacks were disqualified. Um, some dogs still can carry the genetics of black, Goofy, for right. example. Um, th there are two different kinds of blacks in Malinois. There's a dominant black and a recessive black, like we were talking about the other yeah. day. Yeah, explain that again so that people understand the difference between what, what is a dominant gene and a recessive gene. So black er, in Belgians is uh, a dominant color. Okay. So, and what that means is you have to breed a black parent to a fawn parent to get blacks. Okay. Some, to get a solid black? To get a solid black. Got it. Some fawns, like Goofy, and um, with the uh, invent of, of Embark and, and Wisdom Panel, those yep. kind of things, we can actually see this now. Right. Before, it was just kind of a guessing game. Okay. Um, but they can carry what we call recessive black. We can see it in their genetic profile. And if you were to breed two dogs that are genetically fawn but mm -hmm. carry the gene for black together, you could get black puppies in fawn litters. It's rare. Okay. Now, would they be mixed? Would there be like a black one, a fawn one? Yes. And, okay. Absolutely. And you could even get a silver one, right? I would have to, you know, it's just going to kind of depend on the dog's genetic profile. Got that it. would be exceedingly rare if they carried both the gray gotcha. and, and the black. But if it was a dilute of the fawn. They could. Okay, got it. I okay. mean, just. Rare. You, Very you know, rare, rare. I mean, it would be luck of the draw. Right. So um, with genetics, if you're going to breed two two recessive blacks together, it's the mandolin square. Okay. Um, you know, and if you know anything about genetics, you can actually look and see. If you bred two, two excuse me, two uh, recessive blacks together. Okay. So two fawns recessive. Right. They would have a 25% chance in every puppy. Wait, let me think about that. Yes. Um, of throwing a black. Okay. Now, that doesn't happen very often. That's two recessive blacks. Yes. Breeding two recessive blacks yes. together. Although they may not show it. They may be fawns. They could have they a recessive They will be fawns. Gene. They will be fawns. They will okay, be fawns. Okay, got it. Yep. Now, what if you breed two blacks together? You'll always get black. Okay, got yep. it. Okay, yep. all right. Yep. And a black with a fawn, then it's a crapshoot. It's a crapshoot. Okay, got yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. Do people breed... Okay, you, your breeding program, I think, is very unique mm -hmm. because you love the idea of what the standard of this breed is. Sure. Right, as far as confirmation aesthetics, let's call it that part, but also the confirmation behavior and the workability of the dog. And I have this huge issue with so many working dogs that they show in confirmation, but they're not really, people aren't putting forth the effort to show the workability of the breed. Sure. And if it's a working breed or a herding breed or whatever it is, why isn't that, I shouldn't ask that question, why isn't it more important? Why is it so important for you? You know, to me, a Malamaw is a, a jack of all trades kind of dog. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really like a dog that I can show in the confirmation ring, blow off and go herding that day. Mm -hmm. You know, go do obedience, go do um, anything I want, Yeah. really. I mean, I, I've done all the dog sports. Mm -hmm. I, I've settled on herding because that's what I really like to do. Right. Um, but 
I don't know why it isn't important to some people. Yeah. A majority of Malinois breeders, even if they have show lines, do give a crap. I mean, yeah. they, they do. I think so too, uh, more and, so. And, and a lot of times the dogs that are shown in the confirmation ring are owner handler. Um, oh. And what they usually do is finish their championship and go on to do other sports. Right. Now, you know, uh, we're starting to see a bigger and bigger divide between the working and the show lines. Yeah, I want to talk about that. 20, 30 years ago, you didn't see that. Okay, in Malinois. In Malinois. Right. Yeah. Why do you think we're seeing that? <sighs> That's a very good question I ask myself. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, give you, I'll give you something. The other day I had, I had dinner with Avi and Bill Santis, who's mm -hmm. a very well-known, very well-read and versed breeder in German Shepherds. And he made a really important statement. And it changed my way, I, the way I look at show dogs sure. and working dogs. He said, a work, and this is no insult, guys, to, to people who do uh, white dogs, but he said, a person who's doing protection sports with their German Shepherd is looking for another dog that's good at the sport. Mm -hmm. And that's what they want to breed together. Mm -hmm. And they'll criticize a show dog for having one thing, or, or, you know, whatever it is. But a, a show person is looking for so many of these things to put together, mm -hmm. but isn't that concerned about it. And that's what I'm wondering is, where does that fit together? Like, where is that fine line where you go, they should look this way and they should work this way, the behavior and the, the confirmation? Sure. I mean, it, that's a really controversial topic in Malamar, for sure. I know. And, and if you get a working person and put a show to, person together, you will almost always have an argument. Yeah, yeah. But... I really do think the breed can do it all. I do too. That's my point. Um, and, you know, my problem is there's a lot of great dogs that are working dogs. They're beautiful. Mm -hmm. They should be able to do their job till they're For old. Sure. Yeah. But if you don't give a thought about structure, yeah. when that dog's eight, it's going to be done. There's a lot of beautiful show dogs that are well built mm -hmm. that don't work. Right. There has to be a happy medium somewhere. And if, yeah our gene pool pulls apart so far that you can't find those dogs. Yeah. It's, 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 it's not, it's, I don't even know the word for it. It's not yeah. good for the breed. It's I don't horrible. think, yeah, I don't I think. think. It's horrible for the breed. And, and you know, you should be able to do, I don't do bite sports anymore. Right. I used to. I know you did. Yeah. And I had dogs that I would show. I mean, right. um, Goofy's, um, mom, for example, yep, Cammy. I mean, I did IPO with, it was called shits at the time. Yeah, yeah. And I know it's something else now, but I, <laughs> I did that now, with her. Yeah. IG, yeah. IGP. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did that with her, had a great time. Hmm. She also went in the show ring. I did herding with her. She yeah. did obedience. I mean, she was she just, was she was champion. that dog. I mean, she was a champion yeah, all the way around. for yeah. sure. And I, that's what I really like about dogs. I like the utilitarian use of the Me dog. Too. Right. But I also want to respect where that dog came from. And I think in German Shepherds, and this is Bill and I talked about this as well. I don't, I think there's so many good German Shepherd breeders who don't want to go down this slippery slope that they're going down. Um, but they're, they're kind of like jammed because they want to, they want to compete and they're kind of forced to compete in this. And I don't really see that, but maybe we do see it because we were, we were some people we were talking about the other day, mm -hmm. um, where we see bad behavior, bad behavioral genetics in dogs that might look beautiful, but yes. they're nerve bags. Yeah, I mean. Or aggressive. I mean, I just think a dog that has bad genetics like that is just a, is, is a liability. It is. Right? And, 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 you know, getting back to color in the Malinois, it's interesting because in our standard, it reads that color should be a finishing point. Okay. You, uh, when a judge is going over a dog, it should never look at it and be like, oh, it's this color, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make that number one. Interesting. It should be the whole package and then look at the color last. Is there any disqualifications in color in Malinois? Black. Oh, they so cannot show. You cannot show a black Malinois, mm -hmm. but you can breed it. You can breed it but and you can get AKC papers on it. You cannot take it in the show ring. That's interesting. Yeah. Now, why do you think that is? I... I really don't know. Okay. Yeah, I'll be honest. You know, something we're seeing now in Malinois that we didn't see 10, 15 years ago yeah. with, you know, it's, it all has to do with the rise of the popularity of the breed. Right. We're starting to see color breeders mm. and um, there is a breed, a color in the Malinois called the black sable. It's beautiful. Um, I think I see, do they look more like Dutchies? They, mm, they're very dark yeah, yeah. and they have tan points Yeah, yeah. or they'll have like you know, all black and then just, just uh, tan on the legs. Oh, that, okay, so that's different, yeah. Yeah, or, or um, they'll have a silver base color mm. and then a black overlay. Mm -hmm. They're really intense looking and they're beautiful. But again, in our standard, it's a color is a finishing point. Right. And you're starting to see people that are breeding for this color and temperament problems are coming with it. Yeah. Because they're not selecting for a total package. Right. They're just selecting for the color. 
So like in, in German Shepherds, white German Shepherds are automatic, automatically disqualified from, sure. from breeding and stuff too. I think you that's bet. why they started with the Swiss Shepherd idea. Yeah. But um, in Malinois, the only thing is, it's interesting, you can't show them, but you can breed them. You can. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So do you think there is a recessive, recessiveness about it, like, like a, uh, a genetic flaw in the blacks, why they're not showing them? I haven't had my whole, whole lot of hands on the blacks. Yeah, I, mean, I really don't. I, yeah. They're rare. Yeah, they're very rare. They're beautiful. They really are. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't, I don't have enough hands-on knowledge to say yes or no. You know yeah. what I mean? I just, I've never really been around them a whole lot. So we have to look at genetics as being something that's very valid um, as far as the confirmation side, right? I don't want to look at just genetics and go, well, it's a pretty dog. Sure. There's a reason for all these things. Sure. Right. And so uh, what I want you to really address um, to educate people, because a lot of people love Malinois who listen to the show, what is the breed standard? Are you comfortable with saying what, what is the breed standard of the Malinois? For color? For color, yeah. And then um, we're going to go into the next. Well, time. they sh they should in our breed standard. It can range anywhere from mahogany, which is the kind of red with mm -hmm. a black overlay, to fawn, okay. which is um, you know the not the sand color yep. but the fawn color. Yep. Um, they should have some black tipping in in the coat, okay. but they don't have to. Okay, they don't. What about masking? So the only thing in our standard that it reads is they have to have the eyes covered and okay. the nose covered. That's it. Yes. Okay, so now, preferred is obviously the full mask with right. the black ears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, our, the Malinois standard was opened recently and has some tweaks. I haven't okay. read up on it 100%. Right. I, don't, I don't know the new one. Okay. It, like, it just went into effect, like, last okay. month or Maybe something. Maybe we can get to put a link on it. For sure. What about the breed standard for size? Because it, it, it varies quite a bit between female and male, It right? does. Um, so, females can be anywhere from 20... Hmm, going to make me stretch my brain a little bit um they have to be over 21 okay and i think they can be up to it's either 25 or 26 for females well they can be that tall yes okay um males oh gosh i haven't read my standard in a long time okay, this is that's terrible okay. that's right. but we know it's a square <laughs> it is right um hang on males are 23 to 27 inches okay 27 but okay they're 23 to 26 if they're over 27 it's a dq Okay, wow, yep. okay. Yep. And so, females, if they're over 26, it's a DQ? I believe so, yes. Okay, and it. I know if they're under 21, it is for sure. Okay. And boys are under 22, that's a DQ. Okay. Yep. And it's a square, right? It is, it's a square breed. So it's not elongated or nope. taller, right? It has to be square. Yep. And then um, tail, it should be straight. It, the curly tail is, is a it should be. Long, it right? should be straight. Okay. Um, they can carry it in a slight hook when they're moving or working. Okay. Um, it should not be hooked over the back like, right. like a husky. Like a Sharpe or yeah. yeah, yeah. So now looking at that gen from a genetic side, when you look to breed a dog, sure. right? You look at the basic conformation of the dog, but you also like, w give me like, let's go inside your mind. Okay. What are you looking for when you say, I have a great female, I'm looking for a male, or I have a great male, I'm looking for a female. What are you looking for to put together? So when I, when I look at a, b a breeding pair, I really sit down and look at the qualities that my female brings to the table. Okay. Because if I don't know her strengths and weaknesses, I don't know what to look for to balance her out. Okay, so give me an idea of strengths and weaknesses in a dog, Hope. Okay. Um, she has a really great shoulder. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like her... Mm, I like all the things, but no, I don't. <laughs> um, you know, she's on the smaller side of the standard. Yeah. Um, she breeds a, brings a great character to the table. I yeah. mean, I just really like her character. I like her workability. She's a very biddable dog. Mm -hmm. She will work from sun up to sundown and do anything I ask like that. Wow. I enjoy that about her temperament. Yeah. Um, you know, if I were to change her structure a little bit, mm -hmm. I would make her a little shorter. She's a little off square. Okay. That is acceptable for females. Okay, so she's a little longer. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but that is acceptable for females. Okay. They allow it in our standard. Okay. Um, some of the more square, short back girls have a problem with puppies. Okay. Because they, they just don't have a whole lot of place to put them. So right. we allow for a little longer in, in the standard. Got it. Okay. Square is preferred, right. but it's okay. Interesting. Um, okay. You know, if I were to change her a little bit, I would give her a little bit stronger rear. Uh huh. Okay. Just, you know. Um, and when I looked for a male for her, um, I think she could have used a little size. Mm -hmm. I think she could have used a little bone. Okay. Um, I wanted a clear headed dog that would strengthen the str the strengths of her temperament right. and not conflict. Got it. Um, if she was bred to a very hard dog mm -hmm. with her workability, 
could have got some fun puppies. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, I would think so, sure. <laughs> yeah, um, she's she's not a wallflower in any way, shape, or form. No, she's fearless. Yeah, yeah. fearless, yeah. and it, that's great. I yeah, mean, I love it. Yeah, um, you know, the, mixing temperament is a funny thing sometimes. So yeah, so let's talk about temperament now. Okay. So that's the basic structure of the dog that you're looking for, yes. right? Now, what do you look for in that? Because you're just kind of touching on that, the temperament. She has this, I want this, because that will create that. Sure. Right? And yeah. the one thing I know that uh, one guy we had on, on the podcast said that you really don't know about the genetics or what they're going to throw until you have the first litter. Oh, you do. That's right. the God honest truth. You, you, yeah. Well, until they have the first litter. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the thing about genetics is we can, we can have all the testing. Right. We can have all the things. DNA. All the things. All the, all all the things. The right. And you have the dog in front of you, and you work the dog in front of you, and you know the dog in front of you, and then you have this other great dog, and you know the do that dog, and you right. work a bit, and then you mix them together, and you see what happens. Yeah. And sometimes it's what you want, and sometimes it's really not. Yeah. And the longer you're in dogs, and the longer you breed, things pop up that yeah. are weird. And it's, you know, you try your best, you try the, your best to match the correct structure, you try your best to ma match temperament, right? Um, and then you see what you get. So on that thought, if you're looking at these genetics and you say, okay, this dog has this part, I like this dog has this part, and you breed them, and you get something that, eh, you don't really, obviously you're not going to get anything you hate, but sure. you're going to get stuff, maybe that's not my favorite thing. You obviously wouldn't repeat that breeding. No. Right? Yeah. But let's say you got, a, you loved it, right? Sure. This is like, I love this mix or whatever. Then would you repeat that breeding? And at what point do you say, I'll do it once or twice, and then that's it? So it's funny that you mentioned that. Um, you can have the most absolutely fabulous litter that you're like, this is this is perfect, this is what I want, I'm gonna do it again, and right. they turn out completely different. The second time. The second time. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So you can have a perfect litter this time, the second I repeat it, it's not a good litter. No. What do you think the cause of that is if you're dealing with the same genetics on both, exact same genetics? I right? think there's so much more to breeding than just breeding. Yeah. There's environmental factors, there's nutrition, mm -hmm. there is time of the year I mean I just really think there's really? a lot to think about because all the dogs in the litter are going to be different too like you're sure. not going to get eight puppies like all eight aren't going to be perfect for sport or for show or for pet or for whatever yeah they have different personalities so that's probably what the seasons the, the phase of the moon or whatever right, right? Can... so the only time I've I've repeated a litter once um, who was that with so uh with uh Ruger and Drama okay um, and the reason I did it was the first litter had a singleton, oh. which was Creed. Yep. yep. Um, and I really liked the dog, but yeah, I really, dog. really, really wanted a girl. Oh, okay. And that was the reason I repeated the litter. Okay. And I got my girl, and Fox. so I was really happy with that. Her name is Fox. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Fox. Yeah, um, Fox. But I don't. I wouldn't do it again. You wouldn't. No. You wouldn't repeat that breeding again. No. But would you be apt to repeat a breeding if you like the, what's coming out, or would you say, nah, we'll move on and kind of take the behavior? You know, it just kind of really depends. Like, yeah. I, I'll breed a, a similar familial line. Right. Like, um, what my mentor has always taught me in dog breeding, if you like a dog, go to the dad, because mm. you'll get something similar. Okay. Um, and so I've bred to, like, uncles. I've bred right. to, well... There, there are dogs I would love to go to that are deceased, yeah. so that doesn't work out but so well. But you can, though. Some are collected, right? You can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But just, these are the ones you're talking about aren't. Um, well, it just kind of depends on a particular situation, I right. guess. Yeah. Right. So, the, so you, there's an interesting fact that I want to go into with the whole genetic part, and that is you're saying you have this behavior, you have this characteristic, and you can go back to the father mm -hmm. and the mother. Where, like, how do you start to like assemble those lines like okay i'm going to go to this dog and get this like how do you know what's coming out of where and does the male throw more does the female throw more? answer that as a separate question after do the first question first okay. um how do you know where to go like there's the father or the mother wh wh what gives what yeah so uh that's a very hard question to answer i know because i'm so confused about the it. only way that i i feel that you can really do that is by knowing the dogs the dogs you've already thrown or the dogs that you're going to breed? The dogs you're going to breed to. Okay. So say I'm going to go to breed to dog, this dog. Okay. Okay. I don't just look at that dog. Mm -hmm. I look at his litter mates. I go to, I go to his father. I go to his aunt. I go to his familial line okay. to see what that line has produced. Okay. And, and what are you looking at? Like, what can you get out of that? Just like references from people who have had the dogs, people who have worked the dogs? Or like structure-wise, or what, what you know what I find a lot of value in. This is going to sound really silly. No, I pick up the phone call or the phone, and I call people 
that have litter mates and I have a really frank conversation about what they do with their dog during the day. Okay. And I find a really great resource in pet people. And mm -hmm. that sounds silly because I'm a dog person. Right, right. Dog persons, dog people can become uh, very good at covering up things about their dogs. For pet, sure. pet people do not know yeah, what they're, they're saying. Stuck at it. Yeah, they really sure. do. So they'll like they're saying, "Oh, you know, Bob did this today," mm -hmm. and it's like, "Ooh, I don't like that." Yeah. You know what I mean? Or like things I don't like to hear: dog aggression. Yeah. I just don't. Yeah, yeah. Um, fearful around people. Those yeah. are not things I like. Yeah. Um, you know, aggression towards other, well, all the things, animals in general. Yeah. Or nerve, um, do nervy dogs. Nervy right, dogs, yeah. f you know, scared of loud noises. I mean, there's, I think there's a, a real fine line between a dog that is terrified of life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. I'm going to go back again and say what I said. Like, dog people are really good at covering up those yeah, things. Yeah. And if you have a dog with an amazing trainer, that dog can look totally slick. But yeah. if it was with a pet person, it'd be a hot nightmare. So I talked about that with this guy, Pierre, who does the Swedish military dog. And he said that, and I want to address the question to you. Um, how much, if you have a genetic sound dog, mm -hmm. right, how much influence will the, the female, the mom, sure. put upon that dog? And let's say you had a genetically very sharp or weak dog, how much influence can a trainer come in sure. and cover up over that? So when I breed a litter, I think that a litter is 80% of the mom. Wow. I really do. Okay. Because... 80% as far as behavior? Behavior. Or, okay, got it. Okay. Yeah. So for instance, like when the puppies are young, you invite strangers in the house. Hey, come handle my puppies. See yeah. what they got. You know, um, if the mom is fearful around people, she is going to tell those puppies in that whelping box to be fearful of people. Mm. She will their first experiences, like when they're four weeks old, they start following the mom out of the whelping box. Mm -hmm. And at my place, they start, I start taking them out and feed livestock. Yep. I live on a farm. Dogs for me have to be good around tractors. They have to be good around trucks. They have to be good around noises. They have to be good around slamming gates. Yep. They have to be good around all those things. Sure. I start them really young. Yeah. But if the mom is scared of those things, it, it teaches that the puppies true. to be scared. So that's learned behavior, it, it is. right? It is. Even, so even if the dog was genetically came from great, everything was perfect, there could be a big influence upon this puppy to become a very sharp, shy, or, or, or nervy dog sure. because of the way the mom's raising him. Sure. Then how much of an influence can, because you said dog people cover things up, and I, I mean, we can see through it. Like, you, we can see, oh, that dog's a fearful dog, but it's been worked with. You bet. How much do you think can be kind of overridden on that when the dog is now raised by somebody who says, okay, well, I'm going to expose him to, he's afraid of that, but I'm going to expose him to it. Yeah. He's nervous of that. How much do you think? I, be I think tr a good trainer can do a lot for a dog. Mm -hmm. um, I really do. I, I mean, obviously they're going to have the genetic component for the things they're fearful of, yeah. and that's always never going to go away. Right. But yeah, they can cover up a lot of it. Right. Yeah. And that can be dis discerning, right? If you're trying to figure out what that dog really is, unless you know, you don't know. Yeah. And, and things you can see too, like um, in that kind of situation, say like this dog is with a famous trainer mm -hmm. and that, do that trainer is excellent but they have a litter mate that's been bred before right so instead of doing what or going and looking at what this dog has done mm -hmm. i'll go look at like what the litter brother has produced right I see. Your point. and and it's not necessarily indicative of what this dog can produce because right. again they're different dogs yeah but you can kind of see the genetics and the familial line so um female and male mother and father mm -hmm. what does the female bring to the table and what does the male bring to the table i mean the the, the semen hits the egg all decisions are made at that moment. You bet. Right? What does the egg bring in? What does the semen bring in, the sperm bring in? Like, what are the two, look, like, who has the looks? Will they look kind of like a little bit like mom, a little bit like dad? I mean, I always find in humans that the, the daughter always looks more like the dad. Yeah. And the son always looks more like the mother. Boy, I mean, that can be super variable. It can super be. Super variable. Okay. Like, you can see ones that are like a clone of their parents. Uh -huh. And then you can see a mix it, it just really depends. Like okay. I, I, as far as breeding goes, I prefer a little bit more of a, we, we call it doggy female. Like they okay, kind yeah, of yeah. look almost like a male. Oh, oh okay. Um, I think a doggy like being as far as liking dogs. Okay. No, no, no. But they, they, if you look at them, you kind of like, eh. um, I think those are, are better breeding bitches. I okay. really do. Uh -huh. I think they, um, at least in my experience of what I've bred, yeah, yeah, it yeah. seems like my doggier girls are better moms. Not necessarily better genetic behaviored moms, yeah, but yeah, just, yeah. Um, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But so do you think that 
So what do you? So if you're looking for a male, mm -hmm. you're saying 80% comes through the female. Yeah, behavior-wise. Behavior-wise. Yep. Okay. So if you had a really confident male and you bred it to a really insecure female, you're, you're worried about insecure. Now. Absolutely. But what about if you bred an insecure male to a really confident female? because the male had everything I mean, she else. can definitely help him. Mm -hmm. I don't really want any insecurity when I breed a dog. Right, that's what I was going to say, <laughs> Honestly, right? yeah. I really don't. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we all have our degrees of things we can live with. Yeah. Um, I, I, in my lifestyle, cannot take sound sensitivity. Right. Zero percent. For sure. And, and if I had a, a breeding pair, neither of them would be allowed to be sensitive. I, I just mm -hmm. wouldn't do the breeding. Yeah, yeah, no, It's not sure. worth it for me. Well, with such a large gene pool available, like, I wonder why people don't spend more focus on getting a really solid, you know, male and female. People get kennel blind. Yeah. I mean, I certainly do sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. I, I will, you know, it's funny. I was talking to my girlfriend the other day, um, actually Hope's owner. Okay. And she, we were joking around. We're kind of cut from the same cloth. Uh -huh. We had a lot of the same mentors. We had a lot of the hands-on old right. school stuff. Like we, we started in dogs before the smartphones were a thing. Um, we looked at paper pedigrees, right. we got hands on dogs, we asked the hard questions, mm -hmm. we, that kind of thing. And so we kind of have a similar background. Got it. Um, I don't really forgot where I was going with this. Well, about the male <laughs> and the female, the 80% being uh, the female bring, oh, bring Oh, yeah. In. And we were talking about it, about being kennel blind. Mm -hmm. um, and we're all, because we have a bias as being a human. Sure. I, I see a dog that looks like my style of dog. Right. And I'm like, okay, that's pretty. But... At the same time, I have people in my life mm -hmm. that I can be like, hey, can you go look at this for me? Right. Hey, can you, am I doing something stupid? Mm -hmm. I bounce ideas off people. That's a good idea, um, yeah. Especially people that have had similar dogs or similar lines, yeah, or, yeah. you know, new dogs back 20 years ago. I can, it, she's one of those people I can call. I was looking at um, importing a female from um, overseas. Yeah. And I, there were a couple lines that I didn't know in the pedigree. Yeah. I don't know them. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know the people well enough to, to know that, you know, to ask them right. because again, they're not going to tell you the truth. They're not going to tell me the yeah. truth. So I called her and asked her and she knew who they were. And she's like, don't you dare. Oh you know, really? You know, okay. and it was like, okay, well thank you. And then that's it, important. And it was funny because she was like, I hate to be so like negative Nancy. I'm like, yeah. no, no, please tell me. Yeah. You want to know. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, really good. And sh there's been a couple of times where she was looking at a pedigree and I did the same thing. I'm like, well, this is what I know. Mm -hmm. And I, I enjoy people in my life that don't pull punches. Yeah. They will tell you the good, bad, and the real ugly. Because sure. no dog is perfect, and they're all going to have problems. For sure. And it's like, if you don't know the good, bad, and the ugly, yeah. wait till you breed it and see what happens. Because you're going to yeah. get the ugly. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I mean, that's the crapshoot. Like, what happens there when that happens? Like, where does that fault then lie? Can you trace it back? Like, let's say you get... It's always blamed on the stud dog. Oh, is it really? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's kind of a joke in dogs. Oh, oh it's yeah. funny. Um, you know, you just have to be um, objective about it. Yeah. So I, I have been breeding for a long time. I have litters that have been, are fantastic. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are exactly what I'm looking for. I have had litters that Super don't sure. meet what my standards. Yeah. They really don't. Yeah. And that, I think, it defines you as a breeder. Yeah. Because regardless, those dogs still live with someone. I for produce sure. that dog, and they still live with the family. Yeah. And so it's my responsibility when that dog's having a problem, I'm a phone call away. Yeah. And I, I will tell them how to work through it because I've done it myself. Yeah, that's one thing that you've, I mean, you've done it several times. I mean, every time I see you, you're getting a, a dog, you know, you, you stand behind your dogs. Yeah. You know, like you'll take them back. And I think that's, I mean, I, I know a lot of breeders say, well, I'll give them the money back or I'll give them another dog. But actually to take the dog back because it didn't work out and not put the dog down. Yeah. I think that's such an important component. I mean, obviously if the dog was dangerous, you wouldn't have a problem doing that. But yep. if it just didn't work out for them and it's inconvenient for you, you still make it work. Yep. Um, I think that's really important. But again, you do a lot of research, right? Do. You do a lot of work into one, the genetics of the dog, and then the genetics of the people who are going to get your dog. Well, hopefully. Right, you try to find <laughs> You know, it's, it's kind of like um, when a dog is with a really great trainer, uh -huh. some people are really good at covering up their flaws as well. Right, well, that's true. <laughs> yeah. what, what do you look for in the right Malinois owner? So I'm not one of those people that won't sell to 
you know, so you go to some Malamon breeders and they won't sell you a dog if you're, if you've never had a Malamon, yeah. which is justifiable. Like, you know, sure. I'm not one of those people. Yeah. No, no, you're not. Um, I don't mind selling to people starting on the breed. If they've had a lot of breed experience, if they've had other herding breeds, mm -hmm. if they've had tough breeds like Akitas, mm -hmm. Rottweilers, although yeah. Malamar, not similar Nothing to any like of those, this, yeah. <laughs> but at least they have the experience right. of having to deal with their management. Tenacity. Yeah. yeah. Um, the perfect Malamar owner for me is a dog, a person that'll do sports, wants their dog as a family member, because there's a lot of people that stick them in kennels. And in my opinion, Malamar, are, I know it's going to piss a lot of people off, That's but fine. Malamar are not made for kennels in my yeah. opinion. They should live in the fam with yeah, the family. I um, I, those really are, are my two things. They yeah. want to do things with their dogs. They're active. Right. Um, you know, they're hikers, they're joggers. Mm -hmm. mainly it's the family member thing. I want them to be included. Yeah. I want them to be like, oh, I'm going to go on vacation. I want to take my dog. Yeah. I'm going to go hiking out in the hills and take my dog. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I have sold to people that are hardcore, you know, I mean, some of my dogs have mach, notch, uh, mm -hmm. ox, yeah, yeah. Can't pronounce it. <laughs> agility. <laughs> Mock, watch. There we yeah, go. Yeah. Um, and I love those kind of homes too. Yeah. 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 Um, it, it really, it really, I want someone that, understands their dogs live a long time yeah and that they want a dog to do that right you know it's and i i i will go back i, I honestly i fa i look at them on facebook i look at them on google right <laughs> i see how many dogs they've had in their life yeah um Big decision to make right and this is going to sound a little silly but every once in a while i'll find a breed they've had and i'll, I'll call that dog's breeder and see what wow. they did with it good for you we live in a very um i don't even know the word for it a society that moves on really quick yeah um What's a throwaway society? Throwaway there we society go. Had to think about yeah. that for a minute. Yeah. Um, and there are people in this world that are very apt to throw away their dog. And I don't want those kind of people. Yeah. I really don't. That's really sad. Um, I want a dog to be in a home the rest of their life. Yeah. And, you know, there's a saying that goes around, um, you know, don't look at the value of a breeder and what the dog has done. Look at how, if they place a dog I and it's, it's I, can't, I can't remember the exact thing, but you know yeah, what I'm Yeah, I know about. exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. If, 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 I really find value in someone calling me when the dog's 15 that they've just put it down. Yeah. And it's like, they've had that dog its whole life. Yeah. Yeah. You well, know. you've become like family to me and Janet and I know to a lot of other people. For sure. Um, I see so many people, they get their dog, they get it on a Craigslist, they get it from a, you know, a puppy mill or something like that. Yeah. And I mean, if there's anything to take away from this conversation or anything I've ever said in my life is it's not easy to get it. I mean, I waited two years to get good from you. You bet. And um, it, it was... The, a lot of work, but I'll tell you, it changes your life. And, you know, if you're going to be stuck with a dog for 10 to 15 years, yep. that's a long time. You bet. You know, you want to get the right one. It's better to wait six months, a year, two years, and get what you're going to work with. You bet. Right? Um, so in, in kind of wrapping this whole thing up, in the genetics of things, like people are now mixing a lot with German Shepherds and Malmos, which I, I disagree with. Mm -hmm. I, I don't like any dogs mixed because it's just... I, look, they made the German. Obviously, didn't, didn't the German? Did I think I may have asked you this before? Didn't the German Shepherd stem out of the Malinois somehow in there? You know, I mean, it kind of depends on whose history you read. Yeah. Um, they certainly were a land race from shepherds. Right. Um, they had a purpose. If you look at the original purpose of the German Shepherd and the original purpose of the Malinois, yeah. they were probably were pretty similar. Very similar. Um, they've obviously diverged. Yeah. Um, you know, if you there are still a lot of German Shepherds that herd. If you, yeah, that's, if you, you watch them much, herd, um, you do down here, Southern yeah, California. Yeah. Well, I saw it um, when I saw you, but I didn't know that before. I never saw it before. But they, their herding style is a big movable fence. Yeah. Um, Malinois have a little bit of a different herding style. They're a tending breed as well, but yeah. they, they don't have the big, huge stride of the German Shepherd. Mm -hmm. um, I forgot where I was going again. The, uh, the genetics of the, the German Shepherd stemming out of the Malinois. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. Um, you know, again, going back, they, it was probably a land race very similar. Got it. They had a similar purpose. Yeah. Um, the Malinois originally were a shepherd dog right. that not only guarded the flock, but also guarded the home. So originally, that, that's a great point. Mm -hmm. The original Malinois was, it did have that guarding into the it protection did. instinct. It did. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. So I thought that was something that was put in later. No. Okay. No, so from the get-go. From the get-go. They were, they guarded the shepherd's flock. Yeah. As well as guarding the home. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then... You know, around um, the time that Malinois really became a breed, um, agriculture changed in Belgium. Um, mm -hmm. There weren't as many sheep. Right. And they started to do dogs in protection training. I mean, we all see those photos of the, yeah. them doing protection in the 1800s. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the Malinois especially, especially um, 
not so much the other Belgian breeds, although yeah. the first police dogs that were Belgians in this country were black dogs. Granadils? Yes. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. I didn't yeah. know that. Okay. But they've, they've kind of, you know, the workability of the Malinois has really been concentrated yeah. on more than the other Belgian varieties. I mean, you can still get the other Belgian varieties at work. I don't want to like irritate them, you know, but yeah. you still can find them. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. And yeah, there's still sure. breeders that concentrate 100% on working ability yep. in those varieties. Mm -hmm. um, and you find them more in Europe. There's a few breeders in the United States that are really trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, With like Turves and, and, and Grandales yes. due to protection. Yep. Okay. Yeah, the Lacanois are kind of, Lacanois need a little help in the genetics department. Yeah, well, you said they're just really recently getting back into the yes. swing of breeding. Yes. So with the German, and I've got both the German Shepherd and the Melon, they're very, very different dogs. Yes. Um, what is, and I, I, it's probably a rhetorical question, but what is it like that are you going to benefit in a dog, like let's say a, a German Shepherd or a Malinois to breed a German Shepherd line into it? You don't know. I don't really find a whole lot of value okay. in it. Yeah, I don't find a value you in it. You know, my problem with this is I'm not against mixed breeding. Yeah, okay. Ah, sorry. That's all right. That's um, better than me. <laughs> I, I'm really not a mix, against mixed breeding. I feel that if someone is in the military and they need to get this. That's different, yeah. They, Go for, sure. go for it. For sure. If a shepherd, you want to yeah. do, get this and you need to mix a breed, yeah, I don't really do care. Yeah, no, it's not a big deal. Um, I, I don't agree with breeding, mixed breeding for sports. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't. I agree with you. Yeah. It, it, the thing about it is, I think when you're breeding for a purpose, like I, one, my livestock guardian dog lives on a farm. She's a mutt. Right. She's a livestock guardian dog mix. A right. purposely oh, okay. bred mix okay, for her know. job. Okay, got it. Uh, but she's not purebred. Okay. Um, she, in the wrong hands, would be a hot nightmare. She could never be a house dog. Right. She, she lives with her sheep. Yeah. That is her job. Yeah. She doesn't play with the other dogs. No. Right. But on the farm, in that situation. She's perfect. She's perfect. Right. And if a dog came out that was not quite right in the head, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be alive. Right. Well, that's her job. And I mean, so many people have these dogs and I get these questions constantly. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got a life of breeding dog and it's going after my dog. Well, that's the job of the it dog. It is, right? it is. They're, and then genetics are very hardwired yeah, in those dogs. Wired. You're not gonna undo that. But it's funny, one. you know, like I'm a dog trainer. I have Malinois. Yeah. Um, I have, uh, we have hunting dogs as well. Right. And it's like, people go in my house and I'm like, don't pet that dog. Right. And they're like, what do you mean you can't pet her? I'm like. They don't get it. They don't get it. Yeah. It's like, that's, that's what she's doing. But I, you know, going back, I don't see the point in mixing dogs for a sport. No, I don't either. And the reason I think that, and it, it you know, it's like, okay, say, say you did a perfect mixed breeding. Say you, you bred the German Shepherd and the Malinois and you got five dogs that were amazing. That's right. great. Mm -hmm. What but, are you gonna do with the five dogs that don't turn out? Right, that's you, always my issue. Are you gonna put them with pets? Yeah. Like in a pet home? Yeah. Because they probably won't work out. Well, that's the issue with a lot of people doing it for agility too. They see these, a lot of these mixed breeds and it's, you know, I mean, I'm a very outspoken person for, for the, the benefit of animals, of dogs mainly. So. My issue is exactly that. Like if you're going to play your little gene pool, because in the old days, I mean, and this is something that, you know, Bill talked about quite a bit. So in the old days, you bred them. The ones that were great, you kept the other ones. Bucket. Yeah. They just drowned them. They yeah. killed them. Yeah. So, you know, if you want to be ethical, then you should try to stay within this pool so you know what you're going to get. But sure. mixing it in, you, you might end up with a couple of great dogs and create a new breed. But I mean, I think the sad part of it is what's going to happen to the ones that can't work out, the ones that wash out. You bet. And well, in and, the sport, they do. Um, when I was really active in rescue, I had five or six come through rescue, the German mm -hmm. Shepherd Mal Malinois cross. I didn't like them. They, yeah. weren't, they weren't a Malinois and they weren't a shepherd. Yeah, they're they, not. They're just, they weren't for me. Yeah. They may be great for other people. Yeah. Um, I, but it frustrated me because at least one of them, I know I could call and follow back where she came from. Mm -hmm. And it was a police dog breeding. Mm -hmm. They did it on purpose. Um, and it was like, this dog was just a nerve bag and it, she was a sweet dog, yeah. but it's like, where do you place a nerve bag with a very strong bite? Strong bite. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. and you know, the breeder didn't care enough to care about it, not to dump it in rescue. Yeah, and it's like, worst. and then it's cleaning up somebody else's mess. Well, that happens all the time. It does. Rescue. And it's, it's years. really sad. Yeah. That's the worst part. So. Yeah. All right, so in, in wrapping all this up, in the genetic thing of the dog, obviously we want to get somebody who, a breeder, who's going to really understand that, but looking for, ask, somebody who's going to get a puppy, what should they ask about, and, and this is like, I always tell people, f meet the parents of the dog. You bet. Meet other dogs that the breeder has bred. You bet. Because those are little things. Of, is there any advice you can give to somebody who's, and again, 
I don't care if you're getting a protection dog, you're just getting in. If you're already in the sport for years, you don't need this advice here. This might, this might just be entertaining for you, but um, somebody just wants to get into a little, maybe they want to do IPO, IGP or whatever. Sure. They want to do a ring sport, but they also want a nice dog for their family. What are the top three things you would say to look for um, in the breeder? I'm, I'm, looking through, I'm looking through the online, sure. right? Because now, I mean, I say don't buy a dog online, but what I'm saying is, don't order a puppy through, you know, puppymill.com. You bet. You know, but what would I look for? Those top three things that you could give advice that people should ask if they're not asking you. Maybe they want to go to you for a breeding, but any breeder. Sure. Um, number one is health. Okay. So in Malinois, we have the chick program through the OFA. Okay. Um, Orthopedic Foundation for Animals. Yep. At a minimum, they need hips, elbows, and eyes done. Okay. Eyes is a yearly basis. Okay. Um, things that should be added, in my opinion, are heart okay. for Malinois. Um, I have also added the Embark profile. Yep. Um, I think that's really important now. Mm -hmm. Health is paramount. Right. And if, if someone says, I, I, you know, oh, I've done it, but I haven't sent it in. Okay, well, show me the copies. Right. And um, OFA has a website where you can go take their registered name and go look. Okay. Don't take anyone's word for it because they can fake it. Great advice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, another one is what I would ask breeders, kind of what we were talking about a little bit earlier. Do you take your dogs back? Yep. In what situation does that happen? Yeah. And if someone goes, oh, no, you know, I, well, you know, him or ha. Is that a question? Okay, so if somebody says that to me, I would be like, wow, this person really cares about the dog. Mm -hmm. Do you think some breeders might go, oh, this person's not serious about the dog. They want to give it a try out for a year or two and then take the dog and get rid of the dog? No, I don't. You don't? Okay, good. No. You, you take it from the side of, God, this person, like, my thing would be like, what if I died? Like, yep. I mean, now I'm married, but if I was single and I died, sure. I said to you, God, I'll put you in my will, but I gotta make sure Goofy's got a place to go. Yep. That, so that you like to hear that. I do. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. Um, and I like when people ask really intelligent questions. Yeah. The worst thing at, in a breeder that I get, and I get these emails a lot, I, it's like literally two sentences. It's like, can I get a dog? How much? And I, I just, I respond to those people. <laughs> I, I actually have a clip art now that I just clip out of all the things you should ask and look for right. in Malinois. And I, they never respond to me. Oh, that's funny. And I just really feel that people price shop these days, which I get, dogs are expensive, but there is a difference between yeah. a very well-bred dog, you will pay for it, versus a yeah. Craigslist special. For sure. There, there is. For sure, we, for sure. A breeding is expensive to do. Yeah, I mean, expensive. health testing alone, yeah. it's thousands of dollars. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, Third thing I would ask for is I would see what they've done with the parents. Uh -huh. um, and you're right. I would like to meet the parents yeah. and make sure they're a dog I can live with. Yeah, for sure. Because everybody has their own definition of temperament. What I think is a good temperament may not yeah. be someone else's. Yeah, for sure. You know, and, and there are a lot of great dogs that I don't want to live with. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. Like yeah. you want a dog that does this specific thing. Yeah. You should make sure you meet it and go get a dog from that person. Yeah, like I sure. have no problem referring to others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, that, that's, a, that's a tough thing. You got to live with this dog. Absolutely. And I think the genetics of, if you have a good female that is easy to live with and a good male that's easy to live with, chances are you probably get the probably be okay. Dog. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, not always, but you know, again, going back to that whole thing that genetics is interesting sometimes. <laughs> I mean, it's such I'm I'm delving more and more into it in the podcast because people really because you don't it is a crapshoot, mm -hmm. you know, and we all get smitten by oh the puppy's cute. That's really little to do with it. Really you know? little. I mean, I can love an ugly dog, but yeah. I, I can't love a dog that's a pain in the neck. You yeah. Know? That's really a, a lot harder. So. Yeah. All right, I'm going to put a link to you in the description so people can kind of peruse your stuff. But um, I also want to put any links that we can get um, for, we should probably do like Belgian Malinois. Sure. American Belgian Malinois Club and stuff like that. So, all right, anyway, great chat oh, as always. What? Um, I just have one other thing to say. Yeah. If someone is looking for a puppy, um, a really good link is the American Belgian Malinois Club, as okay. well as the American Working Malinois Club referral of breeders. Okay, so let's put that in the, in the video description yep. down below because that'll help people. And just educate yourself on the Malinois. It's, it's, an, it's the best breed in the world yep. or the worst breed in the world. It's, it's got a lot. Very much. You know, it's, it's really, yeah. it's, it, you'll, you'll never be lukewarm about, no. you know, your Belgian Malinois. You're going to love them or you're going to hate them. And that's, <laughs> I think that's, that's all you're going to get. So, yep. all right, good chat. All right. Thank you.